and that's the spirit of ecstasy and I'm gonna ask her to go for a rest now oh yes oh yes <laughs> and uh, Emily would just say hi now I wonder if can I do this while driving that means while I'm driving and uh, if I want to wave to the guy in front of me I'll just ask her to say hi maybe oh oh there she is and uh, then I might just say yeah I don't need you now go down oh yes <laughs> this is something huh okay enough with the shenanigans let's review the car you know the way this car is designed is another level altogether that's the spirits of ecstasy there they no longer call it Emily but that's her name actually okay and that's the logo we're talking about right you see this logo there you know it's you're at the top of his game right you're at the top of your game if your car has that logo right and these wheels these hubs see it's static here right and I've been driving around look at it it's still facing upright right even this one is still facing upright this thing stays no matter how the wheel turn now that's Rolls Royce for you and look at the coincidence <laughs> yeah they're all straight so the Cullinan why is it called the Cullinan? Cullinan is the name of the largest diamond ever okay and that diamond is currently on the uh, British crown jewel so you actually own a Cullinan the Queen of UK Elizabeth owns a Cullinan as well everything about this car is just so different from everything you've seen out there you know you thought you've seen everything until you go up to a Rolls Royce and you realize that you've never seen what is exactly a luxury car all about these carpets are not the type that you find in your regular mercedes-benz or bmw or lexus all right most cars at the back here all these would have been plastics right high quality plastics right and uh, people brag about uh, napa leather and that sort right well rolls royce uses your beautiful napa leather here to wrap all these all these parts all right it's just a different way of building a car we're talking about here and look at that see the reflection that's a piece of glass to actually block out noise okay and if you are in winter right you have a warm cabin and it's freezing outside when you open the boot to retrieve something your warm air will not go out cold air will not go in vice versa in a hot climate okay look at that and this is strong enough to let you sit there okay another thing I want to show you see this here I'll press it and quickly go down there ready oh yes <laughs> see that right then you can plug it in that's your tow hook all right there we go oh yes <laughs> look at the tail lamps man the design the RR logo there everything is just so different about this car and oh, it makes you want to work hard it makes you want to get rich it makes you want to try your best in achieving what life grants you the opportunity to right look at that see 
Rolls-Royce has a very different philosophy when it comes to the way they design their interior. Right? If you compare this to a Mercedes interior, Mercedes interior is the type where it, it tries to appeal to you outright. Rolls-Royce, right, you have to be a certain level to be able to, uh, to basically grasp the concept of it, you know, the understatedness of it. There's high quality wood here, but it's not shouty, it's not in your face. It's hidden down here, right? And then you touch it, and then you felt it. You're like, oh, that's a very nice piece of wood. And all these materials are fantastic. Now, in your usual German car, this part would be what we call a plastic chrome, right? It's actually plastic and a chrome on top, right? In a British luxury car like this, nope. See, it leaves fingerprint. If, if my fingers are dirty enough. Why? Because this is polished stainless steel polish to achieve this effect the reason you have you see chrome in cars right is because they try to mimic polished steel polished steel is a very expensive a very painstaking process to to reach this sort of finishing and that's what you see in cars like Rolls Royce okay it is a show off of their craftsmanship of how much effort they put in and even the carpet. You know how much the carpet is? Starts from 3,000 ringgit. Yep, just for the carpets. Starts from three. Oh, why do I do that? Closing doors. That's for poor people, right? See my hand? Oh yes. Why do I even do that? <laughs> yeah. oh, there we are. Now, you look at the interior, you're like, mm, I can't really grasp whether it's good looking or whether it's pretty or not, right? That's because we're not that level yet, okay? This is something different. You know, something that, that it takes a long, long time time for you to begin to appreciate all the finer details all these little hidden wood veneers normally a car maker would have used plastic on areas like this because it's not a touch point and you can't even see it it's right behind the steering wheel right and these beautiful piano black accents this is not the same material that you touch in your gloss black mercedes c-class nope Right, these polished metal buttons, different finishing, completely different level of finishing. Okay. And if you ask me whether the center console is it is it pretty, I do not know how to answer you because their ideology, they put every single individual button, they give it a space and then they give it a place. Right? So it's not the type where everything is swoopy, everything is you know outright appealing. No. Right? It's functional and sometimes it's hard to understand but that's sophistication for you right you need to figure out something there are surprises there are learnings there are things that that awaits you to explore and that's how they build their interiors now given that all this polished chrome is really nice but under our weather sometimes it really glares you all right now come back to this look at that the little Cullinan batch there with a clock in there. Lovely. <laughs> yeah, it's just so different. The whole car is just so, so, so different. Okay. Um, the camera system, mm, I have to go into reverse to be able to do that. Ooh, even this is polished metal. That's a low gear. Hmm. Interesting. So, uh, look at that, the camera. <laughs> yep, I don't have to walk around the car, I'll be able to film around the car. Of course, we all know the reason that Rolls Royce would have all this wonderful technology is also because that it is under the BMW group, right? So. BMW Group owns Rolls-Royce and then uh, 
that's the benefit of under a powerful or high-tech big automotive firm like BMW there's one thing I want to show you guys okay let's turn the aircon to soft all right these aircon vents right, you see them in your again I'm gonna use C-Class because only Mercedes and uh, Rolls-Royce uses this is this requires some effort to push it around but wherever you leave you leave it it will be there and I want you to listen to this okay let me switch off the aircon for a while I'm gonna put a camera near and listen to this Yep, the whole thing is one piece. And given that it is smaller, it will be higher pitch. Hear that? My god. That's amazing, right? Oh, I don't know, man. I just look at it, it's just unbelievable. Unbelievable. And you appreciate it that there are people out there putting effort building cars like these. For us mere mortals to dream. Even the hinge is polished metal. I think only the Brits would build cars of this level. Right? Let's go to the rear seats and uh, enjoy our car from the back. Again, that's how the doors open. Classic Rolls Royce trait. And when you do that, it's just amazing. The way you look at it, the way you approach it, right? It's just, a, it's just something else. Okay, let's hop in here. So this is the first SUV from Rolls Royce. Okay, now, close the door. Oh yes effortless okay <laughs> and, I mean because you're chauffeur driven so you come into the car um, the guy can close the door for you or you can just press a button and it will just close you know it's just so different look at these rails there right in your normal car is plastic in this one is polished metal again these buttons polished metal everything is just listen to that <laughs> <laughs> and you, I don't think you will be able to touch plastic anywhere here because even down here, even all the way down here, is wrapped in high quality, smooth napa leather. Everywhere, every surface is all finished in leather. Okay, I'm gonna use that again. Leather, 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 wood, metal, metal, leather, 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 metal, wood. That's the new pattern. We see this on Prada wallets, right? The box pattern leather. Very nice. And look at that. That's your infotainment screen and you can control it here. Look at that. Yes, my vehicle. Yep, if you're sitting behind here, your driver is in front, this is your vehicle. Yup. <laughs> Madness. I can't wait to try the sound system later. Okay. Now, in most cars, you need some expensive sound system to, to basically uh, show your customers that they made their money's worth, right? Rolls-Royce is very different. Rolls-Royce give premium sound system makers the opportunity to put their sound system into a Rolls Royce but they don't get to brand their logo okay it's Rolls Royce bespoke audio <laughs> uh, there's an air vent down there again it's finished in polished metal beautiful everything is just exquisite and uh, it's, it's something out of my my zone to be honest I'm like okay Wow, right? That's what I do. Oh, I believe this glass bottle is finished in crystal. And uh, most people would... I mean, 
I don't know, man. How often do you want to drink? How often would you want to drink from a glass bottle in a car? I, but having it here, it's just different, right? There's the glass, and then you pour your water, and then you drink from it. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna drive. If I own a Rolls Royce, I'm gonna drive up next to a coconut seller and uh, ask them to get me some coconut drink and then uh, pour it into this glass and my, I enjoy my coconut drink and of course that's where you put your, sh your champagne bottle or your water bottle in this chill compartment look at that even this little hinge <laughs> Look at this base here, it's rubberized. Yeah. Okay, adjust the temperature. Cover it nicely here. <sighs> Amazing. What else do you need to know? Um, Panoramy roof, of course, but uh, given that it's so sunny up there now, I'm not gonna do anything with it. Now, do I need to go through my leg room and head room? I don't think we need to even go into that discussion, right? Because it is just absolutely comfortable here, and I can even recline further. My god. Okay, this is. I'm now in a position that I'm easily compromised by a different gender. <laughs> oh my god. It's just sensational. The way you sit behind here. Oh my god. Let me show you. And you know what? There's another thing I want to show you. Look at this side bolster. It is designed so that when you're having an interesting discussion, you can sit roughly sideways like that and continue on your discussion. All right? Or if you're a lady, all right, you want to show that you're interested in the guy, you tend to point your body towards him. All right, ladies, right? You all do that, right? <laughs> yeah. And this is just... Really, really nice. This is what you get. You know, when I look at the uh, AMG GT4 the other day, that cost 1.8 million, now that I think about this, this cost another 1.4 from that, so this is 3.2 million. It almost feels like this one is worth it, worth every single dollar, every single ringgit you paid for it. Uh, while that 1.8 million comes with an E-Class interior, I don't know. Uh, but of course, that's a performance Mercedes-Benz AMG. Nevertheless, oh, let's go drive this thing. All right. Oh, poor people. You know what I did just now? I pulled the door handle. I tried to push out from here, right? Because I'm used to be poor. That's how you go down from the road spots. And, uh, yep, not me holding it. Let's go for a drive. Now, yesterday I drove the G63. It's completely two sides of things, you know. That is like so raw. And um, this one is just, I have 
never been in a car as comfortable as this I just there are no parallels to be drawn you know I've driven uh, a Range Rover Vogue I've driven a Bentayga um, basically I've driven a lot of SUVs or I don't even need to judge this car as an SUV standalone the SUV you know because uh, you judge it like any super luxury limo and I've never been in a car of course I've, I haven't driven the new Phantom okay from what I learned the new Phantom is even another level up so um, the closest parallel that I can draw so far now or in terms of positioning they will be mentioned alongside would have been the Bentayga to be completely honest, now I like the Bentega, but to me, that is closer in terms of sensation, in terms of soundproofing, in terms of touch points and all that. Of course, it's one level up from Porsches, okay? It's, 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 it's also like this car, it's all leather, 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 everything. But in terms of how it drives, how it behaves, that is closer to a Cayenne than the Cullinan, all right? The Cullinan is just completely different. It is absolutely effortless whether you are going 20 kilometers per hour or 200 kilometers per hour. It's just absolutely smooth and quiet. I mean, there's a piece of glass right behind the rear headrest before you reach the uh, luggage compartment so this car is just like sedans now um, a lot of you <coughs> would have assumed um, sedans are just wagons without the boot right or SUVs can carry more things but sedan gives you better passenger compartment insulation because your seat bags are covered and then the glass there and then the parcel it covers the passenger cell from the the noise that coming up from the rear suspension mounting and all that all right but this one is just like a super limo it's so effortless all right the steering wheel is so easy and visibility is so good that you don't feel that kind of uh, you know normally when you put someone into a a car like a like a Rolls Royce or a Mozan or a Flying Spur they would have felt a bit pressured right it's like oh my god I need to I need to drive carefully I need to make sure I look out in front check everything no in this car I just drive it like I drive my XC90 it's just comfortable See, the roads are bad just now so I can feel the car going over them, but I hear absolutely nothing. All I can hear is just my aircon vents. Now, the engine. 6.75 litres V12 turbocharged. And we all know V12s are creamy smooth. If you've never driven a V12, let me tell you this, V12s, they feel like when your XC90 or your X5 or your 330E, uh, 350E is running on electric power. It is that smooth, that effortless. You don't feel the mechanical frictions of an engine. You don't feel all that, right? It's just supremely smooth. That's how a V12 feels. <laughs> that spooked me out just now, that guy. My god. Maybe he should have used his hand to let me know he wants to do something with it, with himself. Anyway, what are the amenities? I mean, it's a Rolls Royce. It's a car that starts from 3.2 million ringgit. If I didn't get it wrong, or 3.6, either way. This is an expensive car, of course, but it's one of those cars whereby, yeah, 2 million. 3 million, yep. And then you sat in it and then you're like, hmm, it's worth it. Yeah, that's how it feels like. In, by contrast, when I learned of the selling price 
of the current generation Cayenne. Even though I love the Cayenne, it drives well. But when I learn of its price, I'm like, that's steep. That's bordering not worthwhile. That's why you don't see a lot of brand new Cayennes running around because they're, they've gotten so expensive. Back then, a base Cayenne, you could have had it for, I don't know, 6, 680 or something like that. But now, a base Cayenne starts from 8. The moment you finish up the spec sheet, sign your name, it's closer to 9. Yeah. So, this one, on the other hand, you felt as though, hey, it's worth it. Yeah, that's the sensation it gives you. Because you are in a realm that is in a class of its own. You see the road, you see the things happening out there, but it's like you're watching a... As if you're watching a... As if you're wearing a virtual gear, looking at things going around, but you did not on your volume, you know? It's just absolutely silent in here. And weirdly, it's, my, it's the first time I sat in a car that has more than 500 horsepower, more than 800 newton meters of torque. But I never felt the need to plant my throttle, you know, because it's just so satisfying, so rewarding to just be sitting in here and looking out, enjoying the car. Now, let's talk about other things that are more technical instead of just the sensation. Now, driving the Cullinan, the positioning of this car is very different from the Bentayga. When you sit in the Bentayga, you feel very sporty. It has a cockpit that is very similar to the Continental GT. That's the Bentayga. And you feel the sportiness in that car, you know. When you rev it, the W12 engine, and the way it goes, it, it feels sporty. But this one, you have the traditional large diameter Rolls-Royce steering wheel you you also sit like you if you were to be on a dinner table right you're perched up high and you sit the way you do like this and it's very comfortable even though it's very different from the usual GT sitting position and the large steering wheel without pedal shifters suggests that it wants you to waft you know to to drive smoothly comfortably dignifying that's how this car drives and i was surprised because i would have thought given that rolls royce is now trying to target younger audience they would have used this opportunity as in building their first suv to try and embark on something different as in making it a little bit more sportier yeah i would have thought that they would have i thought they would have used this opportunity when they are launching an suv to do something different to do something sportier you know to make it edgier to attract people to buy i thought they would have done that but they stayed true to the rolls royce tradition And everything is very familiar to a chauffeur. Yep. And I think this will be the default format of a... Want to do the full acceleration again? Okay, let's go. See the speeds just go like that. <laughs> air suspension of this car, the way, oh, it's just so comfortable. Now, the car isn't, isn't clumsy. It's not clumsy at all. You know, the turn-in is good. It does its thing. Now, I'll show you what, I'll show you what do I mean by effortless, all right? I'm going about 100 plus, put my foot down. I haven't even touched the floor yet. I I did not I did not <coughs> push it pedal to the metal. Okay. Now all the way down with the click. 
Look at it go. <laughs> All right. It is just a little bit more wallowy than an XC90, but it drives well, just like an XC90. But it's way larger, right? It is a different size altogether. You know how some of us like to put our uh, stuffs in the door handle, right? You know, a lot of people will say that, oh, the door handle is a pass-through, I can't put my phone there, I can't put my smart tag there. Oops. <laughs> Wait, I can't put my phone there. Wait, the door handle on this car is so long that you can almost put anything you like the entire length. Look at that. <laughs> So, in our Horizon tradition of sending our colleagues off to the airport if they're flying off and fetching them when they're coming back, I am picking up TJ. So I'm now at KIA and uh, TJ is coming back with uh, his, his wife. Uh, he just went on an assignment in Taiwan and uh, I'm going to pick him up in a Cullinan. So you were chauffeured in a Bentley. flying spur there, right? Yeah. And now you level up. Level, level up. up. <laughs> <laughs> Triple up. Now, uh, anyone of you who happen to be British, I would need your explanation on why certain things were done certain ways. Okay, now I'm seated in the Cullinan interior, it's very well finished, it's high quality, yes, but there seems to be a very liberal use of space when a button is needed. It's as if you need a button, then you just place it here. You need a knob, then you place it here. Um, I'll give you an example, right? We all know Rolls-Royce has this auto door closing mechanism, right? Where you press a button and the door will close. And it's placed here like a secret self-destruct button. Then you have one over here, and you have two over there, hiding there. Yeah, that one is to control the left and right door. And what's even more epic is the rear passengers. I, I, can't, I can't reach there now, but I tell you, the rear passenger, the door opening and closing, is right up here on, on, on the D pillar, where their hands can, they can bend their hands here and reach it, right? But below it is the volume button. Yeah, Levine can show you. <laughs> the volume button <laughs> and then the door button. I, 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 I have no idea. It's like you're sitting at the back and then the music is too loud. Oh, let me turn down the volume. <laughs> but actually the rear, underneath here, you have, you have this spot. See the dial there? You could have used that spot to put the volume button. So, yeah. So I guess you can customize anything you want to add anything. You say, oh, I'll add a button for you. Where? Never mind, we have lots of space. <laughs> that's, the, that's the weird thing I, I felt about Rolls Royce designers' um, buttery logic. <laughs> they need to like change the layout of the buttons. Yeah, they need to make up their mind, right? Mm. But overall, of course, it's high quality. It's, this will be the first complain on Rolls-Royce interior on the entire planet. <laughs> <laughs>